Hello everyone, Charles Watts here. Welcome to another edition of Inside Arsenal. It is Wednesday. I hope the week is going well. First of all, good luck to the Lionesses who are just about to kick off against Australia in the World Cup semi-final over in Sydney. By the time you're watching this video, you probably would have already seen the score maybe. And uh, yeah, fingers crossed the Lionesses can get it done and book that final spot against Spain a little bit later on in the week. Okay, lots to talk about Arsenal wise today. I've got news about Martin Odegaard having uh, contract talks starting with the club over extending his stay. We'll talk a little bit about Nuno Tavares, Fabrizio Romano, revealing this morning that Nottingham Forest have made a permanent move for him. Talk a little bit more about Gabriel. We'll get to some of your questions and everything like that. So, plenty to talk about today. Um, but as usual, now, as we're building up to the 31st, which you might have heard, there is a book coming out on the 31st um, called Revolution, The Rise of Arteta's Arsenal. I might have mentioned it one or two times before, uh, but if you haven't seen it yet, I've put a little competition out on my Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it nowadays, um, for uh, to get your to have a chance of winning a couple of signed or well, a signed copy, but I'll give them out to a couple of people. All you have to do is go over to my Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it, and uh, re... <laughs> I want to say retweet, but I said that yesterday and everyone started saying it's called repost now. Uh, so go out there and retweet that tweet or repost that post that you can see on the screen if you're watching this on YouTube. If you're listening on podcasting, go over to my uh, social media, to my Twitter, and uh, you'll find the post. All you've got to do is repost it to be in with a chance of winning. I'll give it a few days and I'll go through everyone who's retweeted. There's already about a couple of thousand nearly. I think I'm going to sort of scroll down randomly and I'll probably get my son to pick a couple of names out and then I'll contact you and uh, I will get a signed personalized copy of the book sent over to you. So please do take part in that competition. And again, if you haven't pre-ordered it yet, then please do pre-order the book. Um, you can find the link down below in the description of this video. It comes out on the 31st. Your support would be greatly appreciated. And if you are in and around the North London area on the 31st, then get yourselves down to the Tollington for this big launch night book signing event. Q&A should be a really, really fun night. So please do get yourselves down to that. Okay, let's talk about the Arsenal captain, Martin Odegaard, shall we? Um, I'm doing in my new guise, my new role, my new job, um, as well as doing stuff for myself. For myself, I'm also doing a little bit of stuff for Team Talk, which you might have noticed over the last sort of months or so. And for them yesterday, I put out a story, which you can see on the screen if you're watching this on YouTube, that Arsenal have now initiated uh, contract talks with Martin Odegaard. Those talks are taking place, have been taking place over the last few weeks. And Arsenal are looking to get a deal done with his representatives to have the contract, to have the captain tied down and rewarded for his fantastic form. Now, Arsenal worked very, very hard in getting these their top players tied down to long term contracts in the last two years or 18 months. We've seen Gabriel, Aaron Ramsdale, Bukai Saka, Gabriel Martinelli, um, William Saliba. All those have signed new deals, been rewarded with new deals, and the focus now is very much on getting Martin Odegaard tied down as well. There's no great rush. He has two years left on his current deal with an option to extend it by another year, so basically got three years left. But it's not just about extending that stay. It's about rewarding him and paying him what he's worth. And let's face it, Martin Odegaard is one of the best players in the Premier League. He's one of the best players in Europe, and he's just going from strength to strength. He's Arsenal's leader. And the club want to reward him for that. And talks are now taking place with his representatives. That is the focus. After getting the other deals done, it's now Martin Odegaard. Ben White, I'm sure as well, will be uh, very much on the agenda of getting that tied down for Arsenal. So Odegaard, talks taking place. I don't know if it's close or anything like that. I just know at the moment that talks are sort of accelerating. They're being held between club and representatives and Arsenal trying to get that done and trying to get the captain signed up. I can't imagine it'll be too much of an issue. They'll just have to pay him what he's worth. You know, Odegaard is very, very happy at Arsenal. We see that. He loves working under Michael Arteta. He loves being the leader of this team. I can't imagine he'll be looking anywhere else and you would hope that this is a deal that is relatively easy to get done. Of course, it's not. It's never really smooth, these negotiations. You always have to you know, negotiate. That's what they're called, negotiations. And, you know, Odegaard's people are going to want to get the best for their player. So, you know, it might take a while, but I'm sure it's something that will happen. And it's very good news that those talks are now directly taking place 
uh, hopefully to get him signed up. Let me know what you guys think. I'm sure you'll all be happy. Certainly the reaction on social media since that story went live yesterday is, you know, overwhelming uh, happiness that Arsenal are trying to get it done. Everyone wants Martin Hogard to stay and no surprise because what an absolutely magical player he is to watch. Okay, David Raya is now officially an Arsenal player. That was done yesterday, as I'm sure you're aware. We're now getting the obligatory new sign-in picture with Win the Dog. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can see that. Had a load of pictures to use, but I had to use the one with Win because, let's face it, who doesn't? They should bring out a calendar. That brilliant merchandise Arsenal idea. A Win calendar. Each day, each month, a different player with Win. I'd be selling like hotcakes. I'd get one. I don't know. Beautiful, beautiful dog. It is. So, yeah, David Ryan, very, very happy. As I said yesterday or the last couple of videos, he was going to get the number 22 shirt. He has been given the number 22 shirt. He said, I'm over the moon to be able to take this challenge in my career and make the step up. I'm really excited to get going and see how the season ends up. I spoke to the boss and he sent me the values of what Arsenal are about, the way the club is going. It's growing even more. So it is a beautiful challenge to take. And I couldn't say no. I've seen Arsenal a lot for a lot of years and since Mikel came he's made a massive difference to the style of play and to the club the way the team plays out at the back being confident and taking possession to the other team is the main thing why I fit into this team I'm going to help as much as possible and we'll see what happens he also spoke about the competition with the goalkeepers talking about how he was looking forward to being part of the goalkeeping union and trying to push each other on and we know that competition is going to be fierce between him and Aaron Ramsdale's Brilliant, uh, some brilliant content Arsenal put out on the sign-in. If you haven't seen the clip yet, when David Raya is with his family in the room when they're signing the contract, he's got all his family there and Mikel Arteta comes out and he presents his 91-year-old granddad with a shirt with Joaquin, his name on the back, and it's all been signed by the Arsenal. And just the absolute joy in the granddad's face and the pride of the fact that David Raya has signed for Arsenal. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece of content. I did retweet it yesterday. It's on my timeline. If you haven't seen it yet, it is well worth watching. Just two minutes of class from Arsenal, really, and just seeing the joy in Raya's face and his family's face of, of uh, faces of you know getting that deal done. And it's a, yeah, it's a, just a lovely piece of content. And um, yes, yeah, there's an awful lot about Arsenal, I think, and the way they treat these players. And you look at the charm that Mikel and Edu have. You know, it's no surprise that when they talk to players at the moment, these players want to sign for them and their families want them to sign for them because, uh, yeah, they 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 certainly know how to act and know how to talk to people, I think. And that's a big, big positive for Arsenal. And you could see the sort of just the glow in the grand 91 year old granddad's eyes when he was talking to them about how excited he was at this move. And you know, it's an interesting move. Obviously, I've talked about it at length, talked about it with James yesterday on yesterday's show and the possible negatives, the positive the possible positives and, you know, sort of stripping all of that back. At the end of the day, Arsenal signed a fantastic goalkeeper who's been brilliant from Brentford, who could well come in and improve this team. If it happens, brilliant. If it raises Ramsdale to another level, brilliant. Whatever, you know, Arsenal should benefit from that. So, yeah, let me know what you guys think about the fact that David Raya is now signed on and is now an Arsenal player. Yeah, so this is interesting news this morning. Um, from Fabrizio Romano, the transfer machine, uh, reported that Nottingham Forest have submitted a formal proposal to sign Nuno Tavares on a permanent deal. Forest are trying to sign a new fullback, Fabrizio says, and negotiations are still ongoing, also on the player side, deal on. Now, this will be music to Arsenal's ears that they have a firm offer in for um, Tavares. We don't know what this offer is. Arsenal are looking for around the £12 million mark, I believe, for Nuno Tavares. Uh, they signed him for about £7 million from Benfica. Obviously, had a mixed first season at Arsenal. Not all terrible, not all great, but you know, certainly you could see he was a talented player there. He went to Marseille again, started brilliantly, had a mixed sort of second half of the season, still ended the season, I think, with seven goals or something like that for Marseille. You know, there, he, There's a player there. There's definitely a player there in Nuno Tavares. It's just about harnessing that and sort of ironing out the, the frailties. And there are certainly frailties there. I think we've all seen that. Um, but, you know, Arsenal signing for 7 million from Benfica. If they can get a profit, if they can almost double their money, you know, get around 12, 13 million, something like that with add-ons, I think that's a pretty good deal. And it gets Nuno Tavares out of the club, which is important. You know, Arsenal have got a lot of players they still need to move on over the next um, couple of weeks before deadline on, on the 1st of September. 
and Nuno Tavares is one of them. You look at others like Lukonga and, and people like that, you know, Balogun even, if his future does lie elsewhere and whatever your thoughts on that, I still think his future does lie elsewhere. Arsenal need to get these deals done and move them on because the last thing you want is a bloated squad of around 32 players once the window shuts because that just benefits no one. We saw the issues that created with Chelsea. We've seen the issues that's created with Arsenal before and they'd worked very hard to make the squad far more compact and far more together. And if you go into this season with too many players, a lot of them who won't be playing just benefits no one. It just causes problems at the training ground. So, yeah, fingers crossed this is a deal that Arsenal can get done. Interesting that I think the only time Nuno Tavares ever played at Nottingham Forest for Arsenal, he got hooked after 25 minutes of that FA Cup tie. So, um, obviously, they're not taking that game into account in their scouting department when they're looking at him. And nor should they, because like I said, I do think there is a player there in Tavares who could give teams something um, positive. He can cause problems with his pace and his directness going forward. It's just about sort of ironing out the, the issues that he has, certainly defensively. But um, yeah, so we'll wait to see how that one progresses. But positive news, I would say, for Arsenal on that front. Another player who has been linked with a move away, Gabriel. Um, these rumours not really dying down. I mean, they're not rumours, I suppose. If you watched yesterday's show with James Benj, um, you know, James is very, very well connected when it comes to Saudi football and what's going on there and the moves they're making in the transfer market. And he confirmed on yesterday's show with me that there is interest from Saudi in Gabriel. He didn't know what Gabriel's feelings were behind it. I mean, if you're watching this on YouTube, there's a picture there in Gabriel in training yesterday with David Raya and David Raya's first training session. Um, and yeah, James wasn't sure on what Gabriel's feelings were about it, but he did know that there was interest there from Saudi. Um, these rumours just aren't going away. They're continuing. The fact that Gabriel didn't play at the weekend, obviously people have sort of jumped on that and then jumped on these rumours and thought there's something big going on. You know, I said it yesterday. Personally, I think it would be utter, utter madness unless someone is coming in and offering money, which you simply cannot say no to. There is no reason for Arsenal to even consider selling Gabriel this late on in the window when the season has already started. Because even if you get silly money for him, every single club that you then turn to to try and buy a replacement knows that you've got silly money for Gabriel. They know that you're desperate to sign a replacement. So they're just going to ask for silly money. So all that silly money you get, you're going to have to put it straight back out the window again to sign a replacement. And then that replacement is going to need time to settle. He's going to need time to forge a relationship with William Saliba. There is nothing positive. There is nothing I can see that would make me ever think that selling Gabriel at this stage of the summer makes any sense. He is one of the first names on the team sheet, or he has been for the last couple of years. I think the fact he didn't play at the weekend was the first time in about 73 Premier League games he didn't start. He's, the relationship with Saliba is fantastic. He's an absolute goal threat at the other end from set pieces. You know, barely any centre-back in England scores more goals than him for the last couple of seasons. I'm not sure any centre-back in England has scored more goals than him in the last couple of seasons. He's a leader off the pitch. There is nothing that would make me think that this is a good deal. Even if Gabriel starts kicking off and saying, I want to go, which I don't think he will. Why would you? Even if he did that, I, I, Arsenal shouldn't consider it. It just makes absolutely zero sense from a footballing point of view. And I very much hope these rumours soon start to die down. And we have to note, of course, at the moment, no bidders come in, anything like that. And it, but it doesn't tend to work that way with Saudi. We've seen the way they've been, that PIF have been approaching players is you know, get the players on the side, get the representatives on the side, basically get a personal terms agreed, which is never an issue because they're paying them 500 grand a week. Um, and and then approach the clubs and try and sort out a deal. We saw that with like Liverpool and Jordan Henderson and everything like that. So maybe it's no surprise that firm bid hasn't come in yet. And the, the rumours of the interest is because things are going on behind the scenes. But yeah, absolutely no reason for Arsenal to consider selling him would be a massive mistake, in my opinion. But let me know if you disagree with me. I can't imagine you will, because I don't, like I said, I don't see any positive in it. But if you do disagree with me, let me know. If you agree with me as well, let me know your thoughts on the whole Gabrielle situation. OK, before I get to your questions, I just wanted to flag this, because this is really positive news. Obviously, with your in Timbers injury, uh, that Zinchenko is back out training. There's a picture he's posted on his social media yesterday on Instagram saying it's great to be back. He's out there with the team in contact training which suggests, you know, Monday night, Crystal Palace, I would expect Zinchenko is going to be involved, potentially will start, even though he hasn't played much football, maybe they'll ease him into it and go with Tommy Asu or something like that at left back. But 
there's been plenty of times when Mikel Arteta has thrown Zinchenko straight into the team when he's fit and you know, really, really positive that he can come back with uh, with Timber out. And, you know, Zinchenko is such a good player, makes such an impact on this Arsenal team as well. So, uh, yeah, really positive that he's posted this picture from him in training. Yesterday, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see Balogun's there, Lekonga's there. Um, I think on Friday they posted a picture. It seemed like that lot was sort of training away from the main group and were training on Friday afternoon and not involved in everything. But maybe that was because they were all coming back from some sort of knock or injuries. But it certainly looks like now they are fully involved with the full squad, which is uh, which is good to see. OK, let's end today, as always, with a few of your questions or comments. There's one here from Marco. He says, I'm not having this agenda against Ramsdale. Comparing the stats is absolutely pointless. Brentford are going to face more shots than Arsenal, for example. The majority of Arsenal fans were underwhelmed at the Ramsdale sign-in when he did. But look what happened after. He is our best keeper and I'm backing him to keep the shirt even after the amount of abuse he took when he signed. Um, yeah, I don't think there is an agenda against Ramsdale. If anything, I've seen just an outpouring of support for Aaron Ramsdale since the David Raya move has sort of been whispering to take place and now has taken place. I've seen, you know, everyone's backing Aaron Ramsdale. I think he's such a popular player with the players, with the fans. So I don't think there's a gender against him at all. And I agree. I think when you look at the stats, when you've got the people, you do obviously compare the two goalkeepers with this deal. But And you look at the passes and the passes into the final third and things like that. And you see Ram, the Raya's mile ahead of Ramsdale. But of course he would, because especially with the pass into the final third, because he's going long to Ivan Tony all the time. Arsenal don't do that. They don't go long. They don't have a striker like Ivan Tony, who the goalkeeper will try and hit because they know basically he can pin the defender, bring it down and, and move. They don't have that sort of player. So Ramsdale is not delivering balls into the final third. So of course his, his passes are going to be way down. And like I said, maybe yeah, shots as well. Brentford can see more shots than Arsenal potentially. Um, and, and so, yeah, the, sc the stats can be skewed. Well, the, the fact is, for me, and I said it at the start of this video, Arsenal just got two brilliant goalkeepers now. Whether, whether, what, how, however this plays out in, over the next 12 months, it's going to be really interesting and intriguing. I've said that, you know, I still think long term, one of them will end up going. I just don't see this is going to last long term. But I don't, I'm not picking a side. I don't, you know, I think Ramsdale has got the shirt right now. He's got the jersey. So it's up to Raya to try and take that off him. And if this takes Ramsdale's game to a new level and he produces excellent performances week in, week out, then Raya's going to have to sit on the bench because he's not going to deserve to start. So, um, so yeah, I don't I don't think there's an agenda against Dim Marco. Here's one from Guna72 says, Charles and James, obviously James was on the show yesterday, I have the same opinion about the team selection, about Gabriel not playing. However, after the team announcement on Saturday, many people went mad over Arteta's team selection and Gabriel. They were calling Arteta all sorts of nasty names. <laughs> welcome to social media. And some were even calling for him to be sacked. Again, welcome to social media. Can you believe this crap? Our fan base needs to calm down. Yeah, 100%. But it's football, it's social media. As much as you need to calm down, it's not going to happen. You just got to accept it. And, you know, I don't think Arteta got his team selection that wrong. I thought for the first half, from what I saw, obviously I wasn't there, but I did watch the extended highlights. First half, Arsenal played some really good stuff. They were 2-0 in, 2-0 up against a team who played a really low block. We've seen Arsenal struggle against that at times. This time, they didn't. They got two goals and were leading. If Arsenal had scored the third goal and won that game comfortably in the second half, I don't think anyone mentions the team selection or anything like that or starts having to go at Arteta. I think everyone says he gets things right. The only problem was Arsenal didn't get the third goal. Then they conceded one on a break and that ended up being nervy. So focus turns to the team selection. But I don't think he necessarily got it wrong or anything. And in terms of the abuse and the nasty names, like I said, it's just social media. you just got to ignore it. It's going to happen. you just got to ignore it and, and think this doesn't, views you see on social media doesn't sort of cover the whole fan base it's just you see these things the louder people shout the more you see them but it, i don't, wouldn't say that's the sort of majority feeling here's one from uh paddy says hi charles all for news about timber how much do you reckon he'll be around the team this season his attitude seems great um so as much as possible you'd imagine but what does that look like i mean look he's he's going to face some really difficult times now i imagine he might even spend some time back in holland um he's going to have the operation he'll have an operation and then after the initial operation i think he'll have, probably have a bit of time with his family that sort of stuff and then he'll come back and then the really hard work starts that's where the rehabilitation starts and he's not going to be around the group obviously he'll be at colney a lot of the time so he will see the players but they're going to be heading off to the training pitch every morning. They're going to be heading off to the gym. They're going to be heading off to the swimming pools. Timber is going to be stuck for a large amount of times in the treatment room, working one-on-one -on -one with the doctors. Um, and it's really, really difficult. I remember Hector Bellerin, when he went through his 
rehab it was really difficult and he admitted there were really dark times and um you know I think he talked about he started drinking too much and stuff like that because he just knew there was no football to play and it's like at times you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel so it's going to be really difficult for Timber it is and Arsenal are going to need to rally around him that's why I think it's so sad for him that this has happened for an experienced player used to Arsenal used to his surroundings it would be difficult for a new player in a new country for this to happen straight away and to be taken away from your squad from playing it's really difficult and I feel so sorry for him um, so yeah, uh, hopefully his attitude and his positive his attitude will hope. But you know, the next six months for him look like basically the inside of a treatment room. Lots of work, lots of pain, lots of conditioning to get to the point where eventually you can start going out on the pitches again. He will be around the squad. He will see them around the building, around the complex. But it's going to be hard for him to feel a real part of it because all the time they're going to be going off to the pitches and he's going to be heading down the corridor to the treatment room. Tough time. Okay, last one here. Arsenal selling Tierney is equivalent to Man City selling us Jesus, Jesus Zinni, says F underscore dot. Man City didn't think much of it at the time, but in hindsight, they'd rather have sold them abroad. Arsenal better look alive and slap a huge fee for him if Newcastle come calling. Yeah, I do kind of agree. They don't need to do Newcastle any favours. I admit it doesn't look like Newcastle are going to be able to pay a massive fee for him this summer. They're talking about FFP issues and all stuff like that. They need to stay within the guidelines. Um, that's why I said yesterday, I think if Arsenal are going to do anything with, with Newcastle when it is a loan, then it has to be done with an obligation to buy at a very, very good price next summer. No favours needed for Newcastle because A, you're going to be strengthening arrivals. Sometimes you have to bite the bullet and do that. And I think they might have to when it comes to Takir and Tierney. Um, but if you do do that, you have to make sure you get a very, very good price. Do them no favours whatsoever in the market. So even if it is a loan initially, it has to come with an obligation to buy. I don't want it just to be an option. I think it has to be an obligation. I think that's the only way that Arsenal should be doing business with Newcastle when it comes to Kieran Tierney. All right, that's it from me, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Appreciate your time. As always, do have a very good Wednesday, wherever you're watching this around the world. And I'll be back tomorrow to talk all things Arsenal once again. Have a great day, everyone. Speak soon.